Nkombo. Much obliged, sir. This is a committee. Um, let me thank the uh, owner, the vice president, for the, the, the policy statement on State House. Indeed, State House is a key institution in this country that does not only deserve a lot of respect, and with that respect comes with uh, huge responsibilities. Mr. Chairman, uh, if this country was a country of laws, it is a fact that the expanded estimates committee would have made adjustments to this budget if we had done what the Constitution requires us to do. The reason why most parliaments are called um, that name, which is normally forbidden, is because they cannot change any figures that are presented to them at the stage of scrutinization of the bill. Progressive parliaments, such as our neighbors here in Malawi, are able to change figures that are in the uh, uh, budgets in order for them to assist the executive to see things certain ways. Because depending on where you are standing, you only see things in a certain manner. Having said so, I would like to also indicate that um, the occupants of the institution of state house, meaning the workers uh, up to from the bottom, the sweepers, right up to the top, the head of state, um, have a duty to ensure that state house is deemed for what it is, to be a rallying point for the entire country, a melting place for the entire country, and not a place that promotes uh, adversity. Mr. Chairman, I have looked at the figures in here, and I'm sure we'll discuss them as we get into the, the numbers. It is clear that the, the devil is in the details, and, and the angel normally resides in the implementation. I have observed here that the budget for last year and the budget for this year, the sum totals are just the same. Exactly the same. 68877221. No change. It means that somebody somewhere down there is not responsive to the changes that have happened in the last fiscal year. In a year when they are pro, uh, 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 pro, pronouncing austerity, we expected that some of these figures would have changed. We see now they've introduced fish ponds in the, in the state house. We don't know what else. Maybe they've also introduced reptiles, and snakes, and things like that. We don't know. My point is simple, that this budget for state house requires to have slightly calmed down significantly come down, not by, I think it's two, 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 three, what, two, under a quarter of a million. I think they could have done better. In utility bills, they could have done better. They, because we're in austerity. Now, to bring the argument closer to home, the mirror image of the people who operate in State House is what you see in a country. State House has got unfettered power to do certain things and not to do certain things. State House is an institution that is supposed to be giving the guiding light, as our owner, the Vice President, has said. It is supposed to be the, 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 that light that the, the three wise men from the East were holding to show direction for everyone. What I'm trying to say here, Mr. Mr. Chairman, is that state house pronouncements, and I'm going to give an example of one state man who died, Mr. Michael Trufia Sata. In terms of what we are going through, may he so rest in peace, what we are going through as a country. At a time when the, the, the economy of this country was buoyant, at the time when PF took over power, the, the past government had plans to build a new state house. I'm sure you know that. Everybody knows that. The previous government that was running an economy of about 7% uh, per annum growth had planned to do an airport. 
Mr. Sata came and said, we cancel this because it's not necessary. You all know that. He canceled the state house construction. He canceled the airport. No sooner did he done that, unfortunately, he fell ill. Then there was state capture. These ideas started coming back. As the ideas were coming back up, the economy was going down. Now we have an economy which is growing at 2% or less. Then the idea of the airport springs back up. The idea of useless expenditure springs back up. 42 fire tenders. This is a matter that will not rest, and I think that State House is an institution strong enough with power to have stopped that transaction, because that transaction was not necessary. Mr. Chairman, State House has got power. It has got power to have stopped the contraction of the Ndola Lusaka dual carriageway, which was laced with a stench of corruption. Those are the duties of the people who reside in State House to show direction, to show the way. I do recall, and at that point I got a bit light, I felt comforted by President Lungu, Edgar Lungu, making a pronouncement that his ministers were corrupt. He said that, I think, uh, on or about 17th of November 2016, I, I, and I stand to be corrected. I thought, here's a man. He is a taffy now who, who's coming to State House. Only one minister was thrown out. This minister, they're still struggling to find a case against him in the court of law. It's been two years. And then suddenly, Mr. Chairman, his Minister of Foreign Affairs resigns and says there's too much corruption in PF. The same president stands up and said, if there's corruption, go to the ACC and report. Yeah, yeah. There was a sudden U-turn on the goodwill which the president had demonstrated to the republic. What happened? This is a very important institution which we cannot just leave to run as it wishes. It brings me, Mr. Speaker, to experiences of the past. I'm sure you all remember the Tedworth properties under the, the, the leadership of President Frederick Chulua. The government, through the ACC, seized the Tedworth properties. Some of them are here. We are seeing them around the Adisababa roundabout. And the judgment came posthumous of the person who was being accused of having owned those properties. This is on all fours with the financial intelligence report of 49 houses. Instead of State House as an institution giving a pat on the back to individuals, patriotic Zambians like John Kasanga, like Mary Schumer, they are in the forefront to demonize them for revealing financial flaws that are, uh, uh, are laced with uh, money laundering suspicions. This is State House. Mr. Chairman, we should not consider this as business as usual. Everyone must play their role, including State House. State House, Mr. Chairman, should have intervened at the point when the, I beg your pardon, should have intervened because the, the State House is the appointing authority. You know that the lady, our lady, Mrs. Anna Chifungula, retired many years ago. We are now running towards maybe four or five years. One of the issues that is squarely on the head of State House is to appoint an Auditor General. Someone tell me, what has been the procrastination? Why have you in PF refused to give us a substantive Auditor General who will be sitting there to audit books of accounts, which we, we all know are, are filled with the financial irregularities, uh, mismanagement of funds, embezzlement, and, and, and so on and so forth. The goodwill should come from that institution. And as we get along, we have a duty, as we uh, uh, provide oversight, that the president must consider seriously putting an auditor general who will be a substantive office bearer confirmed so that we stop this hunky-punking. We should stop. 
How can you leave an institution so key, an institution so important to just be run like a chicken run? Where you just tell anyone, go and put a, a, a influenza for bed flu there, and go and put some feed. No, that office of the Auditor General, the president requires to appoint somebody. And there are many. Out of all of us, 17 million Zambians, there's no way a head of state can fail to appoint a person who is supposed to occupy an office that serious. Seriously speaking. Now, a good country has a reflection from that institution. Tell me why. You think there's too much corruption, as we have been told, in the civil service. Why is the civil service broken? Why is the civil service broken? We have seen time and time and time again people protesting. Protesting on issues of procurement. Just now the trending story is that wild animals are just being sold indiscriminately to companies called Imbizi and they are being translocated to South Africa. In South Africa, Mr. Chairman, that, 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 that country has nearly privatized all the game. It's gone to private hands. That's a fact. And that's why it's, it's picking a lot of money. What are you going to leave? What are you going to leave for the generations that are going to come after us? If you are going to just sell these animals, buffaloes, 50, impalas, 100, black lecture, you just sell, selling, kushitisha, selling. Why? The chiefs are crying. And the people who are doing these activities wine and dine in state house. We know them. We know them. They wine and dine in state house. They jump on our plane. That plane was bought using our heads. The money which was borrowed to buy that presidential plane, it is us who are going to pay. Now you bring your people. Everywhere you go, they go. We will not stop you. We will catch them by the tail. And this is just phraseology. To an extent now where they are saying, these people who have got uh, traces of a past, that is not so clean in terms of drug trafficking. Now there's a court case now. The president moves with the drug dealer. Now, come on, bring dignity back to our country. Bring dignity back to our country. You can meet them after midnight, but during the day, try to avoid them. Because the Englishman said, show me your friend, I'm going to show you your character. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Show me your friend, and I'm going to tell you exactly what your character is. And you who mingle with the people in State House, give them advice because you meet them on eyeball to eyeball contact. We don't. And when we talk, you say they are doing politics. Ah, way, no. Did you see Dr. Kenneth Kaunda playing around with Vicky Goswami? He put him in jail. He put him in there. The most wanted person in the United States of America. Today, those are the people you are drinking champagne and eating caviar with. There's a country to look after. And the people in State House must now begin to be responsive to their responsibilities unless they got in there by error. They must adjust. Certainly, this is not time for comic or where you start now just displaying pythons, papadas, eating all over the show, and then you said you divert people's attention and say the president eats uh, snakes. No. Bring us back to reality. Bring us back to seriousness. Do that. For two weeks, yes. But then the whole point, Mr. Chairman, is that all these things said, I think that the government is taking advantage of the docility of Zambians. They are taking advantage of the docility of Zambians. Finally, it is State House that can stop this Bill 10 that you are intending to bring here. Because people have said no. People have said, no, the president must be the guiding light. That's what my mother, the vice president, said. The office of the president is the one that guides. You, you turned on the VAT. A simple matter. How could you, you turn on a, on a process that is so, so... I mean, look, I've, I've never seen a government like yours in my whole life. You are just good for friendship and not for running people's affairs. Just to drink with and... Uh, not to run people's affairs. If there was a way, I would have stopped this vote. But since there's no room for anyone to do anything here, I have no choice but to let it go.